What's up guys? It's Crypto Coffee here. Today's video is going to be about the vision of Hex and what was and what is the real vision and idea behind Hex. Why did we need Hex in crypto? And there's a lot of hype out there around all these new tokens that have all these complicated different Rube Goldberg machines that may or may not work. I'm sure there's some diamonds in the rough out there. But Hex is more than just a diamond in the rough. It's an entire crypto revolution, all packaged in a digital CD built on the blockchain. So what Hex is, is a digital certificate of deposit, basically a way to earn yield and interest along with some very interesting game theory in order to attract and get mass adoption for crypto. But Hex does so many things that align with the original goals of the cryptocurrency revolution and Bitcoin in general. So the vision of Hex is the vision that crypto is meant for, which is to create a redistribution of global wealth and take the power back into the hands of the people. Now, if that sounds like a bold statement, it is. And I don't even think that calling Hex a CD is doing it adequate justice in terms of its actual vision, in terms of what it can really actualize if Hex is a success. Or maybe better said, when Hex is a success, right? So Hex is designed to not only increase in value faster than anything in human history, which is not outrageous, right? Because Bitcoin did a 2 million X, Ethereum did a 10,000 X, and countless other coins have multiplied very many times throughout the 10 year window that we have to even judge cryptocurrencies, right? So we don't have very much data to go off of. But it's designed not only to increase in value, which when you look at how we're in the fastest appreciating asset class in all of history is really not that far fetched. It's a ridiculous asset class in the first place, but it's also designed to retain that value. And it's designed to be resistant to price drops, right? So taking a step back from the digital CD narrative, what Hex is doing is it's creating a pie of wealth. A new pie where there was no pie before. So hey, at least now there's a fucking pie, right? <laughs> Wouldn't you rather have something than nothing? And not only that, but this pie is designed from its inherent principles to get bigger, easier, and to shrink harder. It's harder to make the pie shrink because it's harder to sell if you're staking. And I mean that psychologically. It's harder to sell psychologically if you are in the smart contract as a stake because it requires a lot of energy and willpower to emergency unstake early and thereby take a penalty. But not only does Hex replace a multi-trillion dollar asset class in the real world and replaces a potentially corrupted uh, CD market, in the traditional financial system. But it, it unlocks financial freedom for all those who believe in it. And the financial freedom that Hex can unlock for you, I'm not saying will, I'm saying can, that's the highest form of success that Hex aims to achieve. Hex aims to achieve massive wealth creation for the maximum amount of people while at the same time harming the minimum amount of people possible. Now, how can you get harmed in Hex, right? You can get harmed if you try to trade it short term. And Hex disincentivizes this short term thinking and really incentivizes that long term vision, that long term dream, which is what all of crypto was designed for. Now, Bitcoin had a good run, right? Bitcoin had 10 years of a run. And the people that were involved early on in Bitcoin, they did very well for themselves, right? They did very, very well for themselves. But now what I'm seeing in cryptocurrency in the whole ecosystem is we are giving up our freedoms. We're giving up our power from this grassroots movement. We're giving it all back up to the big corporations again. So we've got things like Coinbase and BlockFi and big exchanges like Binance and uh, Bittrex and all that. We're giving up our control of our private keys and our power to these new banks, these new trading institutions, and these new lending platforms. 
And crypto is about taking the power back for yourself. Cryptocurrency is about self-sovereignty. It's about replacing the traditional financial system with something better. And it's founded in a lot of libertarian and even semi-anarcho-capitalist ideas, which is what got me interested in it for, in the first place, right? Taking the power back from your, for yourself, decentralizing the network, and making each individual an equally important player in maintaining the strength of the network. It's a big dream, and it's really hard to execute. And although Bitcoin had its run, and I'm not saying Bitcoin's done forever, but Bitcoin is becoming centralized, and it's becoming centralized because we are giving the power back over to what's essentially these new institutions, these new banks. The coin bases of the world will become the new powers in the future. And they're happy to take your private keys away for you in exchange for perceived security. And hey, maybe for you it is more secure because you don't know how to handle your private keys. But listen, guys, what I'm seeing is a lot of not only the new banks and the new lending platforms taking away your private keys in exchange for a lot of counterparty risk, essentially. That's like what? You give your money to BlockFi and they offer you 6% returns annually for a lot of counterparty risk and the lack of control over your Bitcoin. But not only that, but we have institutions like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, these mainstream traditional financial institutions publicly bashing and fudding Bitcoin whilst all the while accumulating it for themselves. So that when they're able to control the majority of it, they can recommend that every person in the world allocates at least 1% of their portfolio into Bitcoin once they deem it safe, quote unquote, safe enough for you to invest in. Read, they own the majority, and now they're allowing you to get a little piece of the pie. So Hex is kind of a fresh start, right? There's a lot of whales in Bitcoin. Some did very well. Some are kind of quiet. Some have exited and some went on to be the Winklevi and some of these other people who don't have bad intentions, but they're creating these new honeypots and these new centralized institutions. Hex is round two because it allows for the creation of new whales. And for those with the ears to listen, it can unlock financial freedom for the masses that might have missed out on the outsized returns from Bitcoin, Ethereum, and any other legitimate project out there. <laughs> the number of legitimate projects in crypto is, is few, but there are legitimate projects. I think Hex is one of them, right? So it's a grassroots movement, and the culture and the climate and the community that I see within the Hex ecosystem reminds me of early Bitcoin days. It reminds me of what cryptocurrency was meant to be, right? It's to f change the world for the better and to free us of corruption, right? Now, as a hater, you might say, oh, well, yeah, we're just redistributing the wealth in the hands of Richard Hart. Ha ha ha. Very clever, right? Very clever. It doesn't matter that some of this, that there are new whales, the fact that the only fact that should matter for you is the potential to have self-sovereign money in your own hands and the ability to become a new whale is open to anybody. We're only in the launch phase of hacks. So regardless of whether or not Richard Hart owns a lot of hacks, which if you look at the distribution, there's actually a lot of different whales out there by this point. So Richard Hart's not some individual that owns like the entire pie, right? But there is a pie that's created and there's definitely whales as there are whales in all cryptocurrencies. Just like in the early days of Bitcoin, the cypherpunks and Satoshi himself for about a year were essentially the only miners. And it's estimated that Satoshi today owns a million Bitcoin, right? Which is 121st, one, about 120th of all Bitcoin. And so for the first few years, when you're starting out a network and you're trying to bootstrap it, you're going to have economic whales. This thing becomes more decentralized over time 
economically. But technically, it's actually more decentralized than Bitcoin because it piggybacks off of the decentralization of Ethereum. Right? The Ethereum network is run by validators all over the world, whereas miners tend to be, for Bitcoin, centralized in, in China. But I'm getting a little bit off topic, right? The grand vision of Hex is to allow for wealth creation for yourself because wealth is a positive sum game. Like I've said before, wealth is not I take from you and I step on your head to get what I want. That's actually trading. That's a zero sum game, which is trading. So in Hex, you have to have a longer term mindset because the only people that benefit in Hex are the people that can sustain that long term mindset and do Hex the right way, which is staking for longer periods of time. We're talking years, right? Now, granted, I do have some Hex liquid, but the majority of my Hex is staked. And when you stake your Hex, you're voting with your action. You're speaking with your action that you believe in the project long term. So it incentivizes long term thinking and thus propagates a bigger pie while making it more difficult mentally to take that activation energy and let's say emergency end stake. Now staking is voluntary, right, as we know, but it's really hard if you stake for five years to take a massive penalty after, let's say, six months, right, because you're losing out on a lot of potential gains and hacks in the future. So it, it disincentivizes people to sell, it incentivizes holding, and even more importantly, it incentivizes long-term thinking over short-term thinking. And that's the kind of mentality that you have to have if you want to ride the hex train to success, right? So the goal of crypto was to create wealth and bring it back into the hands of the people, take the power out of these centralized financial megalithic institutions, right? But what's the point of, we of having wealth? If you want to get involved in hex or crypto, well, you're probably in the right place to make outsized returns. Granted, if you play your cards right and you don't trade or do any other Ponzi schemes or anything like that. But uh, what's the point of having all this wealth? Do we just want to go live in a castle and run away forever? And just sit on our pile of gold and say fuck you to the world? No, I think that real wealth allows people to free themselves, not only free their minds, but free their time to start thinking about how they can help make the world a better place around them. By helping their friends and their family, it, it affords them the free time to make, you know, art or start new businesses, you know, sustainable energy businesses and things like that. And it really allows us to, the, the generation that is coming up, the wealth that we create for ourselves will allow us to actually save the world. I know it sounds outlandish, but... What really is your goal with this? You know, people like Elon Musk, uh, they get hated on all the time. But he's a super wealthy guy. And as a good example, he's using his wealth to create sustainable automobiles and take the power out of the big oil companies and basically clean up the environment with much more uh, environmentally friendly vehicles. He's even launching a space company to... You know, as a total last resort, if we ever need to exit the planet, God forbid, exit scam on the planet, uh, we would have a privatized space company to hopefully make space travel affordable in the near future. Jeff Bezos, people also get pissed off about, but when's the last time you bought something on Amazon Prime? You know, I think I would venture to say that your life is made a lot better by your two-day Amazon Prime shipping in which you got you know, your toilet paper shipped to your house in two days, right? Maybe not earlier during quarantine, but you can get most stuff shipped to your house in two days. That's literally magic. People couldn't have even imagined that 20, 30 years ago. But Amazon has made your quality of life better. And they're able to do that because people like Jeff Bezos, not Jeff Bezos alone, but the whales of the company are able to make decisions that benefit everybody, right? 
Now, again, this is not to say that this could all go to zero tomorrow. You know, Bitcoin could go to zero tomorrow. Ethereum could go to zero tomorrow. We could have a critical vulnerability, an inflation bug, or something discovered in any one of these coins. But by having whales in the project that care more, that are incentivized to help it go, go well, to me this is not a big fear. Feel free to disagree, but if you don't have the ears to listen to this, I'm sure some of you are looking for ways around it. Again, you don't have to watch and you don't have to get involved. The whole reason I made this channel, though, was to talk about how important I think this new opportunity is, because it really is the Crypto Revolution Part 2. It is 2020 hacks is akin to 2010 Bitcoin in my eyes, right? So it's a positive sum game where we can all win. And the vision of hacks is not only to go up in value, but to retain value, right? So again, I'll ask the question, what would you do with your wealth? What kind of economically sustainable business would you create? Do you want to make art? Do you want to make music? Do you want to go have the free time to make beautiful sculptures and just add to the richness of humanity and the novelty of life? Because no matter what you want, I would venture to say that more people are more good than bad. And so whatever you choose to do with your wealth is more likely to make the world a better place than not. As long as you're not raping the world for resources and being a total asshole, I think Hex is creating wealth where we can all win by making the world a better place. Even Richard Hart himself is very honest about, not only is he wealthy already, right? So he's been retired since 2003. He doesn't, I mean, if he wanted to, he could live a high quality of life until he dies. But he's very open about the fact that he's into longevity research and essentially is extending the human lifespan as long as possible. And Vitalik Buterin is also very interested in this. Uh, some other people like Eric Weinstein and Peter Thiel are also very interested in this topic because if we extend the human lifespan, uh, we all and get higher quality of life because of it. Actually, it's more so curing aging. If we can cure aging, we would have more time in which to save the world. Well, that sounds like one of the most noble intentions uh, to me that you could possibly have. So Richard Hart's very open about that. Even if, even if you might be mad that he could be a hex whale, he's pretty open about his intentions, right? And if you don't really know him, if you haven't talked to him, you can hit him up on Telegram. I'm not saying go do that. But he's very honest about his intentions, even though he might come off uh, a little bit abrasive sometimes, and maybe he hurt, he'll hurt your feelings, but chances are, if he blocks you or bans you, you know, it's <laughs> you were probably being kind of a dick first. Anyway, I want to ask the question one more time. What is your goal? What is your intention with all of this potential for newly created wealth? How are you going to help make the world a better place? with your newly created freedom and time and wealth. And as always, guys, keep calm, hex on, and have a good rest of your day.